check it out. So this is a fun one today. If everybody can do me a favor and go check out the base hangout section, the video Q and A section, uh, this is going to be coming from or deriving from that section. So. Base Nation member Kalen Diggins uh, submitted a video and he just did this crazy dope lick. So we were talking about the concept between relative minor and relative major and what the relationship between the both of those were inside of our live stream seminar very recently. I can't remember if it was last week or not, but one of our live stream webinars. So he took it upon himself to go ahead and create this lick surrounding that concept. So being an F minor and A flat major at the same time. So you can play F minor, natural minor scale, and the Ionian A flat major. Both scales have the same exact notes. So he created this lick and intertwined both of them together. And I just kind of, I'm not doing his exact lick. I'm, I'm kind of taking it and putting my twist and my flair on it, or just a couple of notes here and there are kind of out of place versus what he did. But I want to show you guys the concept of just kind of creating your own voice. So something that he did, I can take and make it my own. Something that I've done, he can take and make it his own, or you can take and make it your own. So that's the whole concept I want you guys to understand with this one. So it may not be verbatim if you go back and look at it, I recommend that you actually go back and look at that. And we kind of went back and forth too as well. And I, and I submitted a video uh, response in there, kind of breaking this entire thing down. So I'm basically doing the same thing again, but really more in depth with uh, exactly what I'm doing versus what he did. So it's very similar. Starts off with a minor seven arpeggio. Okay, so we have minor seven, one, three, five, seven. Right, this is scale degrees, one, three, five, seven, to the one, and you're slurring up to the nine. Okay, that's the very first part. One, three, five, seven, one, nine. Okay, so it goes by pretty quick. So now we're going to turn it around with a few notes to transition to A flat, which is the same key, but we're going to transition into this position. So I'll show you. So C, F, E flat. After you've done the arpeggio, C, F, E flat. Okay, so now we're right to A flat, which is our next note. Okay, all together. Okay, so this is just a series of arpeggios and triads uh, going back and forth, and, and they work really well with each other. F minor arpeggio, A flat major triad. So a series of triads and arpeggios to kind of combine this thing together. So after that, you're doing A flat, almost A flat major triad, but you're adding that second note in there. Okay, so all together. So we have A flat, the second note of that A flat major scale, the third note, the fifth note, and then the octave. And you see, I'm kind of doing an, an, an orthodox fingering with this, just because it goes by pretty quick. But you'll start to learn and figure out what feels a lot better, you know, as far as fingering goes and positioning when you start to play this. So I'll go through finger numbers at the end of it and, and try to slow it down for you. Uh, you can also slow it down too here in the bottom of the screen in that little wheel and just kind of slow this whole video down. So the end of that last phrase in the beginning is, and then the end of the second phrase is, Okay, so you get it, the difference between those two? Okay, so I'm gonna show you that. So we got A flat, second note of A flat, third note, fifth note, octave, nine, third note again. Okay, so third note, well, technically the 10th note, because we're up here, which is that C. Are we gonna hit the E flat, A flat, and then the F, very slowly. It's packed with so many different notes and it's such a long lick, it can be easy to get off track or to lose track of where your placement is. So just take it slow, make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise like I always say. Okay, on to the next, I'm gonna review that and we're gonna move on to the next section of this lick. So let me take a quick break for a second. If you guys haven't realized already by now, I'm breaking this exercise up into several sections. I don't know how many sections now, one, like one, two, three, four, five. It's gonna be like six different groups of sections. So this is an easy way to memorize a long lick like that or a long fill. Um, so a long fill. <laughs> so this is the way that I would execute that or I would suggest that you try to execute this exercise or any long exercise like this. So let's keep going. <laughs> 
Let's keep going with it. Next section. So the notes for that, we have B flat, C, E flat, A flat, E flat. I think we went over that before. So those are the notes for that second phrase, the second part of the second phrase. Now we're gonna go to the next part. So I think this is like the last section or the second to last section. So part two of section two is, it goes by pretty quick. So you have B flat, C, E flat, A flat, F. Okay, when you end that, you're gonna go up to the G. Okay, so I'll show you. right there okay so we want to do another arpeggiated movement it's as if we're playing E flat triad the E flat major triad so we're playing the so say for instance we're in E flat or E flat major so we're playing the one of E flat the two of E flat the three the five and the octave okay so let's put it all together. I know it probably sounds like, okay, where are you now? Does it really make sense? First part, F. A flat. E flat. Okay, so if you break it up into sections, you can think about it like that. So F is my starting point. A flat. E, oh, F, e flat is not the start, starting point, but it's as if you're in, in E flat. So. If you want to take just that little bit, just that section, and if you're a beginner trying to play this, stop. <laughs> just stop. It's, it's going to be way, it's going to be way too difficult. This is definitely more of an advanced uh, lick, uh, especially with the inflections and things that you know go on inside of it. But if you're watching just to watch this, that's great. Uh, but just take in or just focus in on what I'm saying versus you know how I'm playing it. Because this is all theory, right? F minor triad, or F minor arpeggio. Um, F minor arpeggio, A flat major triad. E flat major or, um, triad type of arpeggio. So one, three, five, one, one, three, five, one, adding the two in there, okay? And like I said, I'll have this written out so you can go piece by piece. I'm just trying to break it up. I know I'm talking a lot. I, I, you know, everybody you know, gets on me about talking too much. But I really want you to understand what I'm doing, not just play verbatim uh, you know, what I'm playing or just playing it back to me like a robot. But I want you to understand how this works. And the way that I was able to flip this or make this you know, exercise or this lick you know, uh, and flip it into what I wanted it just to, or to morph into something else because I knew the theory behind it. I figured out what it was he was doing, not just the specific notes, because now I can branch off and play something else if that's not exactly what he played, but I can still play that concept or whatever theory goes behind that. So F minor triad or F minor arpeggio with the nine on the top and the octave, and then the A flat major triad with the second note, adding the second note, right? And then same thing with the octave, and then the three, or the three of that. All right, now I'm playing the E flat major triad, or an or inversion of an E flat major chord, right? But I'm able to say that or play something else because like I said, I know where it comes from. Anyway, last two notes. And I'm ending on that chord. Because if I if I play that same chord and put the F on the bass, right, it sounds finished, right? It sounds like a finished chord. Or I can play I can play the D flat there and make it like more of a Lydian type of thing. Right? I'm going off I'm, I'm going off but that's where that chord derives from but I'll give you the notes of that so I have G I have B flat and I have a flat very weird chord right hopefully you guys can get this I want to hear you guys I want to hear you tackle this or something like this take it and change a couple of notes about it um, and add your flair and add your style to it I would love to hear that that would make my heart glad and happy <laughs>